Hello, I'm Gary Ride. I wanted to go over uh, the Alabama ballot with everyone. It's almost election day. There's a lot of things on here that are really confusing. So I wanted to go over each item uh, one by one and make sure everyone understands what they're voting on. Um, the very first thing that you'll see when you get your ballot is the straight party voting option. Now, I actually think that that should probably be illegal. It confuses a lot of people. And what that means is if you check the first box there, um, if, you're, uh, if you say Alabama Democratic or Alabama Re Republican Party, um, any office below that, it will select the candidate of that party that you chose. So if you uh, do a straight ticket Republican Party voting, then every Republican um, a candidate would get the vote for each office, w office where there is a candidate there. Um, one of the reasons I think this is a bad idea, I suppose really I don't think there's any single party that has all the solutions. In some of the positions, um, you may want someone who's conservative. In some positions, you may want someone who's more liberal. So what I like to do is I never use straight party voting. Um, I go through and look at the office, and I look at the qualifications of each individual, and then select the one I, I think is best for the office. So I prefer, it takes a little bit longer, but I prefer to go through each office one by one. So let's go ahead and go through those. Now I've actually made two sets of uh, videos. In one video I go over the 14 Alabama constitutional amendments. Those are very confusing and very important. I'm going to vote no on all of those except for number 13. Uh, I will vote yes on 13 and um, there's a caveat to that. But I uh, made a separate video where I go over each one of the amendments in detail and explain why I'm voting no on all of them. Now as far as the individual offices, your uh, ballot's going to look a little bit different depending on which county you're living in. Um, for me, I'm in Marshall County, so my options are a little bit different. The first uh, office uh, for grabs, of course, on the ballot is uh, that of President. Now. I think uh, everyone knows I'm, I'm a Democratic Socialist, so uh, my first choice would have been to have uh, Bernie Sanders uh, to be president, but he's not on the ballot. So uh, normally what I would do then is write him in, but since Bernie uh, asked all of his supporters to uh, vote for Clinton and, and give Clinton their support, that's what I'm going to do. So that's who I'm voting for. but. I have sort of a litmus test. Uh, we could go into qualifications and experience and all that, but I have another litmus test I want to share with you that I use for all the offices, and, and um, maybe that'll help. If Surely you're not undecided um, by now, but if you want to, to go through each of these, I will. <clears throat> Obviously, I, I think Trump, Trump is a poor choice. Um, For those of you who do, for those of you who just cannot bring yourselves to vote for Clinton, then look at the other options you have. Uh, obviously, I think the Cheeto Nazi is not a, a good choice for the country. I don't want a president uh, um, uh, who is is. So, what an option you could do if you wanted to redeem yourselves as Republicans. Uh, you could look at Gary Johnson. He's running as a, a independent, um, he says, uh, but he's really not a libertarian, or I don't, I don't believe he's really, to me, more GOP. So if you are a Republican and um, you can't bring yourself to vote for Trump, I, was, I would look at either uh, maybe considering Gary Johnson as an option, Jill Stein, or write in another one of the Republican candidates. I think those would have been a better choice than the, the Trump monster that the GOP has created. So um, I'll let uh, you choose who you want for the president. As far as uh, uh, Johnson, again, I think he's more GOP, so I, I couldn't vote for him there. Uh, Jill Stein, um, I don't have a, a problem with her f uh, for the most part on policy. I just don't think she has quite the experience yet. So I hope she keeps working hard. I hope she, she keeps studying and maybe four years I'll look at her again. And uh, maybe she'll be, I think, ready by then. Uh, let's take another look there. Um, as far as the other options, um, we do have a choice for senator in some areas, uh, finally. Um, uh, Shelby has an opponent, so I'm voting for Ron Crumpton. And in the next election cycle, we need to be, sh be sure we get um, Senator Sessions out of there. Uh, he's a total embarrassment to the state. 
uh, these two senators have been obstructionist and are extremists and they've held the state back long enough and uh, we need to get them out of office. So um, I'll be happy to give Ron Crumpton my vote for Senate there and uh, I hope someone will run against Sessions in the next uh, election cycle. And for representatives, I think it's time uh, uh, in my district to put out Adderholt. So I'm going to write in Phil Norris um, as a write-in candidate. Uh, that leaves the Supreme Court justices. There are three places up at the uh, Alabama Supreme Court. Um, there are only one that really had an opponent in the primary was Tom Parker. So in place number three uh, for Supreme Court justice, I'm actually going to write in uh, Donna uh, Bo Laiu, I believe is how you pronounce her name. I'll spell it for you. Uh, so in uh, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, place number three, instead of Tom Parker, I'm writing in Donna J. B E A U L I E U. And for Public Service Commission, instead of Twinkle uh, Kavanaugh, I'm going to write in Terry Dunn, T E R R Y D U N N, uh, for the Public Service Commission. And then most of the rest of the offices are going to depend on your county where you live, and uh, so I'll let you pick through those. Um, my strategy was to look at, um, um, uh, to write in a candidate. If there wasn't a Democrat, I would go back to the primaries to see what the other Republican candidates were. And my thinking is there is, uh, yes, I would, uh, uh, it may be another bad apple, but at least uh, we would replace a, a, a rotten apple with a bad apple until we can get uh, more people. Uh, what we really need to do is for all those who felt the burn to become the burn because Bernie could have never done uh, the things he wanted to do alone. It would have taken a, a complete change in the House and Senate. And that's why this vote is so important because we have to, to go ahead and take control of the Senate now, take as much of the House as we can now. But we also, uh, a lot of the obstructionists and the troublemakers uh, are not up for election this cycle. So it's we're not going to be able to do everything we wanted to do in this election cycle anyway. So um, I'm, um, I really wish that I, I could have cast my vote for Bernie Sanders, but since he did ask us to support Clinton, um, and I think she's qualified, and uh, I don't really have too much hesitation uh, with class uh, giving my vote to Clinton. There are some definite issues I'm going to have to work on. Um, and uh, that's going to be with any administration, but I'd, I'd much rather deal, even if it is status quo, I think that's better than moving backwards. And a quick litmus test that I have for all the candidates, uh, other than qualifications and the ob ob obvious political things, is um, the uh, sort of a trust issue. And that's a way to sort of set the politics aside. I say, okay, would I trust this person with my kids? Uh, with my keys to the car or to my house or would I trust them with the cash? So if we look at uh, back to the president again, uh, would I trust Clinton with my kids? Yes. Would I trust her with the keys to the car or to my house? Uh, yeah. Uh, would I trust her with my cash? Well, yeah, I would probably want receipts, but for the most part, I, I could answer yes, honestly, to all of those. But when you come up to someone like Trump, um, could I trust them babysitting kids? No. Um, and if I can't trust you to hire you as a babysitter, why would I ever want you to run my country? So that's a definite no. Uh, could I trust Trump with the keys to the car or to the house? No. And could I trust him with the cash? No. Uh, he's bankrupted casinos. And I do not even understand how you can bankrupt a casino, but he's a managed to do that multiple times. Um, so there's absolutely no way that I could ever consider voting for him. I know a lot of people think he's going to be an outsider and would change things. Well, we do need an outsider that's going to change things, but Trump didn't run as an outsider or an independent. He ran as the GOP or as a Republican, and, and even they uh, can't control them, can't control him. So um, I think we've created a, a monster, so I'll, I'll be glad to cast my vote um, to send a message, I think, in more ways than one for Hillary Clinton, um, uh, we can never let the hate and, and bigotry that, that Trump has embraced to, to flourish in our country, we need to stamp it out wherever we find it. So I definitely can't support him as a president or in any other uh, job, for that matter. Um, now again, we do have a crisis here. Um, voter turnout is important. 
there are these amendments that will affect you a lot more things on the ballot than just the president. Um, but another part of that is we have to have choices on the ballot. And as you can see from my ballot, there is nothing but Republicans to choose from. So the other part of that equation is we have to find a way to inspire our young people to get out there and run for public office. Uh, politics has become such a dirty word and government is so corrupt that most honest people won't go near it. We have to find a way to fix that and to, to inspire um, new leaders to run for office so that we have choices on the ballot. So. I sort of broke in two rules here uh, that I normally don't. Um, I, I normally would never ask someone to do something that I wouldn't do myself, but I, I, politics just isn't my calling, so um, I'm going to leave that for those who enjoy it. And the other rule is I would never tell people who they should vote for. Um, I think people should be educated on the issues, study the candidates, and make their own choices. Uh, and I hope you'll make a choice that you can live with. And what I've done is I know most people probably won't agree with the choices on the ballot that I'm sharing with you guys now, but I think it's the best um, that, that I could do with the candidates we have to choose from. And again, make your own decisions. I'm not telling you how you should vote. I'm just telling you how I'm voting and explaining why, because especially when it comes to these amendments, the wording is so confusing that I wanted the people to understand what they're signing up for when they amend the Constitution to the state. So there are there are actually two videos about the election and the ballot where I walk through the ballot. I hope you'll take a look at both of them. I appreciate your time. Be sure to get out and vote, and I'll see you out at the polls. Thanks.